Before you begin, make sure to check out parts 1 and 2, they will be the first links in the description. Okay, so you thought the story finished there, but you were severely mistaken. 100 years have gone by since the death of Yoda and the pitiful rebel movement. Anakin and Padme have had four more children, Kaelin, Ben, Arlen and Ahsoka Skywalker. They continue to rule together, their love has not faded. In the last 100 years, their family has expanded, with all their children marrying and having children of their own. This continued for a few generations, and now they have over 60 great grandchildren. Each relative controls and governs a different sector of the galaxy under the Skywalker name, each with a Death Star in close reach if any problems arise. Their rule has not been without conflict. They defeated the Yuzong Vong in 26 ABY and the Lost Tribe of the Sith in 46 ABY. However, in recent years, no one has been foolish enough to spark a rebellion. A few began in the decade following Yoda's death, however the destruction of the rebel leader's home planet quickly taught the civilians of the Empire not to mess with the Skywalker family. In the last 10 years, they began to advance their control into the unknown regions. They had fully conquered the core, the mid and outer rim completely, so it's only natural the unknown regions were next. This was a challenge, but they slowly began advancing. Their biggest campaign was the invasion of the Chiss Ascendancy. The Chiss were highly skilled and capable warriors who put up a good fight, but Anakin himself led the campaign and murdered the nine leaders of the ruling families himself. The Ascendancy territory was key, and the person that ruled this region essentially ruled the entire unknown regions. It was a big position, more important than any other in the known galaxy. The secrets and powers it held were unforeseen, and Anakin decided his daughter, Leia, would sit upon its throne. This decision shocked many in the Skywalker family, and whispers began to travel down its lineage. Many believed Luke would be appointed the ruler of the Chiss Ascendancy. Even though Anakin had six children, Luke and Leia have always been the strongest in the Force, and Luke has always had the edge on Leia. Luke was second in power only to his parents, with Leia being a close third, so it was only natural that everyone thought Luke would get control of the Ascendancy. Unrest started to brew, with arguments between family members beginning to take place. But it was just that, talk until the leaders of Scarif and Moldova met regarding a dispute between their people. The ruler of Scarif was Grey Skywalker, granddaughter to Luke, and the ruler of Moldova was Baron Skywalker, the grandson of Leia. Baron began making fun of Grace, laughing about how his grandmother Leia was appointed to rule the Chiss and not Luke. He makes multiple remarks, highlighting that Anakin and Padme must consider Leia higher and stronger than Luke. Grace tells him to shut up, but he just laughs. Baron concludes by saying that something must have happened behind the scenes that they don't know about. Something that showed Luke's weakness in the force. Grace pushed the table away in frustration, ignites her purple lightsaber and points it at Baron, telling him that if he speaks another word, he will die. Baron looks at her in the eyes for a few seconds. As Grace goes to put down her blade, Baron tells her that he expected a weak emotional outburst from a descendant of Luke. That pushed Grace over the edge. Her red blade scraped the chin of Baron as he leaned back to dodge and ignites his own blade in response. Grace announces that he will die for disrespecting Luke and she charges towards him. Their battle is fierce, neither backs down. They implement strong lightsaber fighting techniques as well as Sith magic in order to overcome the other. The Skywalker family has learnt a lot about the dark side and its abilities in a hundred years and passed this down their family. Grace uses the force to throw a disc in front of Baron. He cuts it in half only to find Grace right behind, pressing forward at a strong pace. Baron backs up, one step at a time, blocking Grace's strikes. He gets ready to plant his back foot and counter strike, but he takes his last step back right into the wall. He trips off balance, and Grace takes the opportunity to spin and decapitate Baron as his body collapses to the floor. Word of Baron's execution at the hands of Grace begins to spread. Leia was furious with Luke. She demands that Luke execute Grace himself as retribution, an eye for an eye. However, Luke boldly proclaims he will not do it, and that Baron was a weakling in the force and stated it would only have been a matter of time before his death. Luke and Leia's relationship had been fairly good up to this point, 
They had always got along well together, but it seems this might be changing. Leia storms out and vows that Luke will regret this. Luke knows that Leia will be targeting Grace and sends his most powerful son, but also Grace's father Colt, to Scarif, temporarily to protect her. Colt also brings his Death Star to orbit Scarif to show the length they were willing to go to protect Grace. But this didn't stop Leia. Her resolve was firm. She wouldn't let the murder of one of her own go unpunished. She brings her own Death Star out of hyperspace, accompanied by four Imperial Star Destroyers, each led by one of her children. This was a full-blown attack. Colt simply watches in shock and didn't expect this from his aunt. Leia hails Colt's Death Star and demands that he hand over Grace or she will show no mercy and blast them into nothingness. But Colt remains firm. Luke told him that Leia would make a show of things, but reassured Colt that she wouldn't dare attack his son. But he was wrong. Colt refused and Leia had no choice. She began powering up her Death Star, ready to fire. Colt's officers detected the energy level rising in Leia's Death Star and he looked at them in surprise. He orders them to charge their Death Star in response, but it was too late. Leia fires upon them, killing Luke's son Colt, his daughter Grace, as well as his Death Star and Scarif in the process. War breaks out between Leia and Luke's side of the family. Their conflict was fierce and devastating, with both sides using the dark side of the force to gain an advantage. Luke and Leia were ruthless, using their immense power to crush their opponents and enforce their rule. As the war dragged on, the galaxy was torn apart by the conflict. Planets were destroyed, innocent lives were lost, and the future looked bleak. The death toll in the Skywalker family had reached 12, and some of Anakin and Padme's other children's lineage got caught in the crossfire, pulling them into the conflict. Anakin and Padme decided it was time for them to intervene. Anakin initially went by himself first to Naboo, where Luke and Leia's fleets were fighting in space. Luke had managed to make his way onto Leia's command ship. He kills one of Leia's granddaughters as he barges through the bridge and prepares to fight his sister. But as they go to swing at each other, Anakin jumps in the middle and uses the force to hold their lightsabers in place, deactivate the blades and grab their hilts with the force. Anakin looks at them with his menacing Sith eyes. He explains how he's disappointed in them. Their war has threatened their reign over the galaxy. If anyone wished to undermine them, they would use the chaos of this war to do it. Not only that, they had killed many members of their own Skywalker family. They needed to be reminded of who they were. Yes, they were Sith, and the ways of the Sith were war and conflict, but they were siblings and Skywalkers first. They better not forget all they've been through together. They each should be satisfied with the damage they've dealt to each other, but now must move past it. If they continue this conflict, there will be no end until the entire family is destroyed. They bow their heads in shame, as they know their father is right. Anakin puts an arm around each one of them and looks out the window of Leia's command ship to see their mother, Padme, come out of hyperspace to join them. Space is still and conflict has been resolved, but out of nowhere, a beam of light pierces straight through Padme's ship, breaking it in half. Anakin and the twins stare in shock as the contents of Padme's ship begin to leech out everywhere. Anakin doesn't waste much time and boards his one-man cruiser and uses the force to connect with Padme. He picks her up floating in space, unconscious and without her left leg. Anger takes over Anakin and he thinks about what to do. He flies back to his command ship where Luke and Leia were also waiting. They connect with the rest of their children and Padme explains what has happened. A being encased in light proclaimed their name was Abeloth and that she had come to rid the galaxy of civilization as they know it. Anakin's eyes grow wide when he heard the name Abeloth. He's read about Abeloth during his time researching the Killick, who referred to Abeloth as the bringer of chaos, who escapes her prison whenever the current of the force changes. The civil war within the Skywalker family must have triggered her release. Anakin goes to inform the Senate of Abeloth's presence, but when he gets there, he realizes it's too late. Abeloth was standing in the center, and as soon as Anakin entered, every senator turned towards him in a robotic motion. She had taken over the minds of everyone in the building. She states that the galaxy is now hers, and the time of the Skywalkers has passed. The guards begin circling towards Anakin's position, and he realizes the severity of the situation. He murders every guard on his way out, and leaves to call a Skywalker family meeting. He connects with every member of his family, and tells them about the threat of Abeloth, and explains the story of his past meeting the Ones, and the power they possess. Abeloth is no different. 
Anakin concludes by saying her power must come from somewhere, and if they find it, they can destroy her. The war has begun. Abeloth has taken over a large chunk of the Skywalker fleet, and she began destroying planets and civilizations one by one. Abeloth had the ability to take over one's mind and body, and many Skywalkers fell into this trap once they confronted Abeloth. The Sith and Abeloth fought each other multiple times, but Abeloth always seemed to escape. She was highly skilled in the Force and a match for Anakin and Padme themselves. Using dark Sith magic, Anakin managed to connect Padme's leg back to her torso. One night whilst Padme was asleep in her bed, Abeloth appeared. Before Padme could sense her presence, she took over Padme's body and writhed in her power. Anakin was far away fighting a distant battle, but felt a disturbance in the Force. He contacted his wife immediately, only to hear Abeloth's voice coming from her body. She demanded he surrender, or else his wife will not live another day. Anakin destroyed the room he was in once the transmission ended. He'd fought Abeloth multiple times, but he'd never been able to finish her off. There must be a way, and in his rage, it came to him. Only one thing can kill one of the ones, the dagger of Mortis. But it's on Mortis, he hasn't been there in over a hundred years. He doesn't know if it even exists anymore, but he has a plan. He contacts his six children and orders them to come to him right away. The seven of them fly towards the coordinates where Mortis was previously. Anakin turns to his kids and asks them to lend him their strength in the force as he needs their power. Anakin sticks out two hands and begins pulling them apart. In the dead of space, light begins to emerge, the gateway to Mortis. Anakin pulls harder and harder, channeling the force through his children, allowing him to achieve the ultimate power. His fingers snap to the side as he rips open the fabric of space and time. The gateway to Mortis has opened. They enter and look around. The planet is mostly destroyed. All buildings crumble to the ground. Anakin heads to where he killed the sun all those years ago and finds what he's looking for. The dagger of Mortis that can kill Abeloth. Abeloth's base was on Coruscant, where she continued to manipulate the government to her side. She had taken over Padme's body, so this was particularly easy. She looks to the atmosphere, as Anakin and his entire fleet begin making their way towards her. Anakin would do anything to save his wife, and a direct campaign was his best opportunity. He and his six children fly down towards the surface, whilst the starships fight above. They head straight towards Abeloth's location, who was ready for their confrontation. She wielded Nightbringer, Padme's ancient Sith sword that could break the blades of lightsabers. But Anakin had come with his own sword. The fight begins as the six Skywalker children and Anakin surround Abeloth, disguised in their mother's body. She swings Nightbringer ferociously and blasts the children with lightning. Kaelin advances from behind, going for the killing strike, but a swift kick in the midsection sends her back. In his anger, Ben goes to counter Abeloth's strike, but gets sloppy and allows Abeloth to capture him by his neck. His father swoops in, bodying Abeloth out of the way only seconds before Ben's neck would have been cracked. Abeloth stands strong, but realizes she cannot overpower their entire family. Abeloth stomped on the ground multiple times, putting every ounce of the force into each blow. This caused a cataclysmic earthquake on the planet, and the Skywalkers could hear buildings beginning to crack and crumble around them. Abeloth thought she could do this to lure the Sith away and make her escape. She knew she couldn't win this fight, but she was wrong. She overestimated the Sith. Anakin did not care about Coruscant. He was willing to let it all die if it meant he could save his wife. He'd let the whole galaxy burn if it meant he could save Padme. He connects with his wife's body through the Force and begins seeing reality from Padme's eyes. He'd never done this before. He didn't know it was possible. Could it be that there was a Force dire between Anakin and Padme? Anakin's desperation to save her must have activated it. Anakin took this chance and transferred his force essence and power through the dyad into Padme, which forced Abeloth out of her mind and body, causing the frightened looking being to drop to the floor. Taking this opportunity, Anakin grips her in place with the force and throws the dagger of Mortis right through her chest, killing Abeloth. They had to get out of there quickly. It could be seconds before buildings collapse on them. They use the force to run towards their ship at tremendous speeds and manage to escape. They look behind them at Coruscant, the Senate was no longer under Abeloth's control, but it didn't matter as every skyscraper toppled to the ground, turning Coruscant's surface to rubble. Anakin and his children hugged Padme deeply. They had almost lost her. But through the conflict, 
the majority of the Skywalker family survived. Although Coruscant was gone, they would quickly re-establish their absolute control over the galaxy. Anakin was convinced Abeloth was the final hurdle in their quest for galactic control, and now no one could oppose them. The Skywalker family would continue to breed and pass down their genes through generations and generations. Anakin and Padme, the heads of the family and ruling dynasty of the galaxy, would remain unopposed until the end of time. Thanks for watching everyone, this is probably the last part in the series so comment on what other series you would like to see. If you enjoyed this video, you have to watch what if Padme was a Jedi or what if Anakin was a Mandalorian Jedi. Please consider becoming a member or Patreon to support the channel, it's only $1 a month. Comment what you thought of the video and I'll do my best to respond, and I'll see you all next time.